So we're going to be uh, going over to episode 5 of the Bread and Butters series, 45A. And in this series we're going to be doing stalls. Stalls are some really cool, really awesome stuff that leads into crazy awesomeness. Uh, some of the good innovators of some, cool, some kind of interesting stall stuff would be like Jake Bullock, uh, Sterling Quinn, um, and Juan Rentero is kind of starting to go down that aisle, as you can see in his in his latest video, Rough Draft. Uh, he had some really cool little stall-ish, uh, green triangle stall stuff. All right. So what a stall is is initially this, wherein you have a looper on your hand. The dice has gone around the yo-yo once and is then hanging loose. Why it's called a stall is it actually you can stall the counterweight by using the yo-yo like that. See how the counterweight stalled there? All right. The uh, very basic stall that was the first one to have been done, I'm fairly sure, came out of a meltdown, which is sort of a bread and butter. It's not one I would call a bread and butter, but I'm going to go ahead and do a tutorial for it later anyway, where it pops in like that and then lands in a stall and does something like that to dismount. Um, all right. So, all right. So the simplest stall, and the one that people were, well, the one that I first figured out was to set in trapeze and then throw the counterweight over and stop it, like, right there. That ends you up in a nice, pretty little stall that you can dismount like that, rolling into another one, etc. Alright, so, stalls are kind of closely related to bee stings, and so we might also cover those in this tutorial. If not, that will be the fifth, or the, the sixth tutorial followed by aerials. Or something like that. All right. So, one of the ways you can use a stall is st a stall is not really a transition trick comparatively. So you use it as its own as its own freestanding trick. But one of the things you can do with it that's kind of cool is you can use this loop and swing it around like this. And when you're done, land there. Oh goodness, you're back in a stall. You can do all sorts of little cool tricks. All right. So that was one. I I can't remember the person's name. They won. Uh, 5A Worlds 2005 and 4, I'm fairly sure. Uh, I can't remember her name. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, one of the ways you can do this, this is a cool little stall trick, is so from a normal stall that exits out by flipping the dice over to the outside, is if you put both fingers in there, you can just kind of throw it around as if you were doing one-handed or uh, on-string Diablo with the yeah. Uh, what's another trick that's close? To, there's not really a trick that's close. To that. Okay. Well, as a freestanding thing, you're just gonna swing it around. You're gonna want to move it about the same rate as the counterweight. Otherwise, it's gonna close in on you like that and become too close, and then stop. And then naturally, when the yo-yo gets too close to your finger, it's gonna slow down really quickly. Um, but it can, you can do some really cool things with it. So one of the things I've done with it is I pop over, flip over twice, land in the middle, it dismounts, drop out, back in a stall. Um, another use of stalls is ending a trick. Uh, John Robb used some really cool ways of, like, of landing in a stall where he flips over, lands it up on, oops, Double. Lands his hand up on top and then throws it up like that. Does some cool little things. It's a cool little way to bind that's a really strong bind if you've used all of your spin. And then if you do it wrong, you're gonna naturally snag your yo yo like I just did. So, um, again, stalls can be used as endings to tricks, as they, is because they stop a lot. They end. They stop a lot of movement. So if you were to be going like really fast with this, you just pop it around. Oh, the dice is now stopped. You can now go now do whatever you want. Roll out and bind or something like something along those lines. All right. So 
When looking at stalls from an overview, there are approximately two kinds of stalls. There's forward handed stalls and back handed stalls. A forward hand stall is something over here where, oops, where you reject and land in some sort of strange mount because you have a knot in your string. Um, so there's forward handed stalls like this one, wherein you have it over here, but if it's over here and it's too off behind your hand over here, it's a backhand stall. They're very similar in use, but they can do some, they do a little bit different things. Um, natural, a uh, backhand stall will cancel out a forward hand stall, uh, and so one of the ways that in the dice passing trick, dice passing trick tutorial, if you, it's kind of like this where you go here, and if you underpass it right there into a backhand, you're now in a backhand pseudo stall. Where and if you get it to go around one more time, that would be a full backhand stall, and somehow my yo-yo just snagged. Didn't really see how that happened, but whatever. And this string is really knotted. I should probably get a new one. All right then. So, one of the ways you can use or one of the ways you can get into a backhand stall is to throw into a double or nothing, loop off the uh, main loop, hop the yo-yo into it, and then roll the dice off like that. And that's a backhanded stall. Then you can pull that over, reject out, and end in a green triangle if you want. <coughs> and now, actually, I, actually there's no, those aren't really too different. All right, so the actual the actual second different kind of stall, that's actually just a, another way of doing the original kind of stall, is a green triangle stall. Uh, a green triangle stall is initially the same thing in a green triangle. Um, it's something, it's more close, it's closer to a gate right there. I call it a green triangle stall. And it's, to get out of it, you just go pass the dice through and then dismount like a normal stall. So one of the ways you can get into one is the trick I was showing you before, where you go into a double or nothing, put the loop onto the yo-yo, flip over to the left, oops, catch it, catch it right there, roll over to the inside, and then drop this little loop here, and you're now in a green triangle stall. And so to get out of it, you just throw the dice through, poof, you're out of it. And again, this is closely related with any gate, right there, to get out of it, you pop the dice through, oops, pop the dice through, and then dismount normally. Um, so a gate is a tiny bit different, um, it has an extra loop on it because it was sitting on the trapeze in the first place, but you can get out of it in some cool ways. Uh, Juan Rintera did something that looks a lot, actually, also looks a lot like something Tyrus Severance would do, so he might have, might have taken it, but it goes like this wherein he passed through, dropped it down, and then flipped the dice up, flipped the dice up through, and then dismounted it in a kind of a cool fashion. Um, I'll have to also make a side tutorial for that trick too, because I don't remember how to do it. I used to know how. Um, So inside of stalls, they behave a lot like, as I mentioned before, a, not a stickless Diablo or a on-string on Diablo. And so what you can do with that is you can do some kind of cool chopsticks and, and uh, Mach 5-ish tricks by simply throwing it around, landing in the middle, dismounting, rolling over, and then catching again into another stall without touching your yo-yo and killing it. Thank you.